every child has the potential to be a reader. Unfortunately, because of uh, yeah, the demographics of the country, the majority of children don't have access to book, don't have caring adults who read. Most don't have caring adults, you know, adults, period. But then even those who have caring adults, you know, to look after them, it's not every adult who has the inclination towards reading or if they do, uh, the means to, to fulfill that. Reading continues to escape us, to put it in another way. The young people are not sufficiently exposed to reading. I stumbled into reading, it was an accident. I have an older brother, I'm the second born of eight children, and he liked to read, don't ask me how. He liked to read that and, you know, sibling rivalry because he read, I wanted to read, of course, and he was encouraging. And then we had the great fortune of being neighbors to a, a mother, a neighbor, who, Mrs. Yawa. We called her Jola, her claim name is Jola, so everybody called her Jola. Because if you call somebody by their claim name, you don't have to add anything in front. We called her Jola, she was Jola. To and she worked for a family I will never know, in somewhere in Newlands. I just knew she worked in Newlands as a domestic worker, half days. She used to come. And they throw away so many good books and comics. I grew up reading all this. Her kids were younger, so she used to give us these books. I grew up reading books and, and you know, the Bino, the Bingo, the, the Girl's Crystal, the, you know, School Friend and things like that. And good books, you know, um, uh, Dickens and things like that. Granted, with limited understanding, but some understanding nonetheless. When I got uh, to read those books now, say, high school and for my degree, you know, I was amazed at how much I had grasped. It was like meeting, you know, old friends again. And so I grew up reading, not because my family bought books. No, they didn't. But I was exposed to books. I was very lucky. We had something called junior certificate. That would be the equivalent of 10th grade today. And African, black African teachers could teach with that. That was the highest. You could reach that as your highest uh, academic qualification and then do a two-year teacher training course, which is what I did. I had to quickly transform myself in my family from being a liability to being an asset. You took the shortest possible you know, course, and that for me was, um, was quite sufficient. I remember somebody asked, telling me, don't leave school after I qualified as a teacher. Go on and do my trick. I thought they were crazy. <laughs> I was already feeling so educated. Why would I go back to school? So I started teaching, and then within a year I fell pregnant. Then within the sec in three quick years I had I was expecting my third child, and the husband decided to leave. I wasn't happy. We were no longer in love. Nothing takes away that I have feeling like being bankrupt and having you know yelling kids who want food and you buy a, a small tin of lactogen. It was forty five cents then. A week later it's gone. You ask the husband, Mom, what did you do with it? <laughs> like, what could I have done with it? Uh, but when he left, I was quite angry because he, he, he made me a single parent and that's something I had never envisaged. But now I look back and I say, thank God, thank God that guy left me because I wouldn't be the woman I am today. And I looked at my sorry situation and I realized that I had to do something. I looked at my teaching qualification, I looked at the schools, there were about 15, 16 primary schools in the Lagunya area then, the, you know, the three townships around Cape Town, Langa, Nyanga, and Kuguletu. And in those 16 schools, only two teachers had matric, and I realized I calculated that if I had matric, married or not married, I would get a teaching post. Guess what? 
I passed half matric, I had four subjects and I got I got the principal of Fezeka Secondary School, it was still a secondary school, to come to my home to beg me to come and teach for him. And since then I've never looked back. When I got a chance to go and do my master's at Columbia University, then of course I left. And from there, then I got a job at the United Nations, then of course I stayed. And that's where I stayed the longest. I never stayed in any job for 20 years. I did. 